Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Ram. Today we're back for more plane reviews. Yes, I'm several days late. If you didn't watch that brief video I made about landing the F-14 with one wing that I made, you know, that whole thing, um, I kind of mentioned why I've been kind of away the past couple of days. Um, basically, my girlfriend had a surgery and I was really paranoid and worried, even though it wasn't too big a deal, it was bothering me a lot. Also, school is starting real soon, like literally tomorrow from the point of recording this, well, today, when you're watching this, and uh, yeah, it's stress and things and stuff and busy and work, whatever. Anyhow, we're gonna get started with plane, in quotes, or, well, not quotes per se. Well, actually, no, those are, those look like quotes. I'm not sure. It's his first monster. He said it looks ugly. I slightly agree. I slightly disagree. I think this, this design on the wings is really interesting and weird, and I haven't seen someone else do something like that. I'm also really curious as to how it will perform, because it's definitely, oh, that didn't quite click. There you go, it's definitely a bit strange. I imagine these, when activated, will clip into that a little bit, which will bug me, but I'm not going to let it bug me too much because I'm always saying that. Anyhow, yeah, the new Panther engines, you got intakes. I like what you've done here with how this is attached. Yeah, I figured it was struts holding it. I mean, not struts, but actually they're called cubic struts. So yes, cubic struts holding it together in there. I do think it's rather interesting, like, obviously I dislike certain aspects of the clipping here and there, but I, I especially think this intake on the wing, this design, this weird, like, corner and brace, and th it, it looks interesting. It looks very interesting, and I like interesting even if it doesn't look as good as other things. It's very interesting. And this, by the way, was a, by a person going by the name of Conrad with a K, and there, there's been a couple of frame dips, and I, I, I'm sure you'll see at least frame dips in the video. If you see any major stuttering, please let me know, I'm, and I'm sorry, and I'll do what I can to make sure it doesn't happen again, but it shouldn't be happening, but somehow I feel like it's happening a little more than it should be, which is unfortunate, but in any case. Oh, can I? No. Yeah. I, um, I reacted way too slowly to that. I just want to point out to you as well that, you know, you were saying like, oh, it's an ugly plane, uh, it's not that good. But actually, it's pretty good, for, especially because you're saying this is like your first, right? I, I'm not sure if that just meant like you're the first thing you're going to send to me or if you meant like your first plane overall. But for a first plane, this is pretty damn good. The only thing I'd say is you don't really need as many wing surfaces as you have here. And they're actually slowing you down, especially all the ones that are at a weird angle. You also have a couple of them that are actually putting lift down. That's interesting. The center of lift could probably be a little further forward. Um, the landing gear are well placed. The only thing is like, like you definitely have the control surfaces that would allow you to pull up and maneuver a lot quicker if, I believe if there was either less swing space or if the uh, center of lift was a little further forward. I'm not 100% sure about that. But I've just died, so you know, you gotta take everything I say with a grain of salt, because obviously I can't fly. <laughs> it's been a little while since I've done one of these after all. Next up, we're taking a look at the VP-11 by William Hudson. This is supposedly the first in a series based on the Panther engines. Super maneuverable, but the roll could use a little bit of work. And it's based on the Strikebreaker 100's fuselage, which I see here, yes. That's interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, because that is the basic... Huh. That's interesting. I, I'm imagining like uh, like manufacturers like reusing parts of different components of different planes and stuff like that. And oh, I see you did the strut here because else this this freaking thing would wobble and that would suck. Oh, I see you've done the similar idea with the uh, the fins on the uh, drop tank as my uh, what is it KF38? I don't remember KF38 or just the K38 or did both of them? I don't really remember. I remember the gist of some of the planes I've made, but not all of them. <laughs> Funnily enough, I remember the older ones better than the newer ones, and that's probably because recently I've been making them more often. But that's neither here nor there because we're supposed to be taking a look at this plane. I definitely like the, um, it, it has like a, a, a sharp look to it, if you get what I mean. Like, it has a very sharp look. At this point, since I've completely forgotten to mention it, and it keeps getting asked relatively often, email me your crafts if you want me to review them with uh, plane reviews in the subject, or like, my craft, or, you know, something obvious in the subject line, because that's that's how you get me to do it. Oh, your landing gear are a bit further back than I would expect. I, I didn't realize, because I wasn't taking off, but, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. Alright. 
Time to test its maneuverability. Ooh. Nice. It's definitely like a heavy fighter, you know what I mean? It's it's very heavy fighter. And the thrust to weight ratio is a bit low probably. Maybe okay, good. Hitting one does activate afterburners. I didn't see anything to indicate that, but I guessed and luckily guessed correctly. And oh yeah, we have drop tanks. I forgot for a moment that we had drop tanks, so I was really confused when I looked at the staging menu and saw that I had a stage to fire. And yeah, unfortunately, uh, destruction effects was not, like, it hasn't been updated since the original freaking version, so things will smoke and fire horribly when you disconnect drop tanks. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. That was uh, a bit intense. And fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, I think he survived. Cockpit banged up quite badly, but I think he survived that. I'm just going to go ahead and drop those on the runway this time round. And... Yawing. Rolling. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Yep. That was not good. But we survived it again. Alright, this time I will attempt to not be quite as incompetent. I was testing the roll capability and that's my excuse. Oh shit! Oh shit, I did it again. Alright, here we go. Testing roll while doing crazy maneuvers. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think you're right that the roll does need some work. It's not that bad though. I think the main thing is like the roll's not good when you're at a uh, low speed, which makes sense because the roll is chiefly controlled by aerodynamic surfaces. I mean, of course, there's thrust vectoring, which helps, and there's also shit. Okay, all right. There's also uh, the reaction wheels, unless you've disabled them. I think I've gotten into the habit recently of disabling them more often. Uh, I'm not sure, though, if I'm remembering that correctly or not. See, because with the F-14 thing I'm working on, I definitely did that. Let me relaunch this one more time, because I want to test dropping the drop tanks. And they drop away pretty smoothly. And then spiral a little, and then fly up, and then down. Oh, I love that, watching them just fly away the way they are. That's great. Alright, let's go ahead and activate the afterburners again and pitch up real hard. Yeah, I think this thing uh, did that pretty well. Oh, look at that. We didn't even lose altitude. We gained altitude doing that maneuver, which is pretty freaking impressive in my opinion. Oops. Okay, yeah, so this thing is a little touchy on the controls. So you, you better be sure that you want to maneuver the way you do because it will go in an instant. All right, here we go. Breakup test, which I'm guessing with these struts isn't an issue. Yeah. I didn't think so. Actually, there's a lot more struts on here than I even noticed at first. But yeah, pretty stable, pretty holding it together. The pilot would be smushed before the plane. Although, liquid fuel, oh wow, you, you do not have a lot of fuel in here, do you? Wow. This thing uh, does not have much range. Although, of course, you could fuel it up, although I don't know how that affects the center of gravity, center of balance, center of balance, center of mass, you know. I just said like the same thing in three different words, but you know what I mean. The uh, balance for it to work. I'm just watching my shadow right now because it's really cool to just be watching the shadow as I'm flying along. Look at that. Very cool. Next up by Jolo Di Yolo, we have the Dynawing X Fighter, which is entirely stock and has some stock missiles on board. Interesting. Huh. The, uh, the, the cluster of intakes just seems wrong here. Also, these little engines, what are they, what are you trying to do there? I don't like that. It just, it just looks wrong. I, I notice you have an Elevon in here. Oh, and it's active. That's gonna clip like crazy. Huh. It's interesting. Yeah, and then this is clipping back here. I'm sorry, I just really dislike it. The, the overall idea, the overall like angles, sharp angles everywhere, I like the idea behind this, but I just feel like the execution, the, the various parts that clip in weird ways is kind of bad. Also, I just noticed this splits into two, two different things. That's why those little engines are there. That's weird. Okay, let's check it out. <laughs> All right. 
Here goes. Oh, you know what? Your rear landing gear is so far back that the center of mass is like really f much further forward. I forgot to take a look at that in the SPH, but yeah, it makes it more difficult to take off. All right. Whoa. Okay, this thing can very easily be destroyed by by uh, yawing too hard, so that's something to watch out for. That's not really a bad thing about the design per se though, but just kind of a thing where you do have to warn the people using the craft about it. Also, I noticed that your uh, control surfaces haven't been like assigned to anything, so every control surface reacts to every input, which can be okay, but it's generally not how things usually work and it can lead to some weirdness or problems. In any case, let's go ahead and try pitching up. So yeah, it maintains speed pretty well while pitching. That's pretty good. Firing the engines. Firing that, apparently. I would have thought the missiles would have fired independently rather than firing the whole freaking thing like that. But I mean, hey, if that's what you want to fire as a missile, it works. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing, however, this thing has massive side slip issues. Those those vertical stabilizers on there do not vertically stabilize it at all. In fact, I can't even pitch up. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We survived. I don't think we even dented the thing. Did we even take damage? No, we didn't. But jeez, man. That that like escape bit, not good. Not good. Also by, what was his name? Jolo Di Yolo. We have the RP4 Hyperstrike. Wow, that's cool looking. So uh, is this supposed to be an SSTO? I'm, I'm not really sure. It's got giant nose cones on the back of those. I guess that looks weird. I don't know, I see... Hmm. I kind of want to see this done where it's like, it's that kind of idea, but they're like embedded in there like this. I think that looks good. But I think having them out like they are, not so good. Got some air brakes, intakes, lots of fuel, rocket fuel I'm assuming. Yep, rocket fuel, crew capacity. Oh, we got a little Clampatron. Yeah, this is definitely a crew transport. Oh, oh, this is like a unmanned crew transport, or rather a uh, unpiloted crew transport. It's got crew, of course, but the pilot is not crew, or the uh, the crew are not pilots. Interesting. Now, I'm not really experienced with flying SSTOs. I haven't made an SSTO or flown an SSTO since, uh, wow, many, many versions back, before the aer aerodynamics change, before heating was a concern, all sorts of things. And so I make no claims of my ability or the craft's ability to go into orbit, even though I'm going to go ahead and fly it very high and very fast and see how far we can go. But uh, keep in mind, I am inexperienced with that. And this can apparently go Mach 4, which is cool. I forgot to pay attention to how close or far your rear landing gear are from the center of mass on this one. Again! Yay, I'm good at that. But, I'd say they're definitely a lot closer, or pretty good. Whoa. Alright, there we go. Jeez. Wow, what the heck? Why is the camera shaking that much? I don't think it needs to be. I think I need to change the settings on camera shake because that's just a bit too much. Wow, what the heck? Oh, things are overheating. Oh, those nose cones on the back are overheating. That's why it was shaking a lot. Well then, look at what you've done. <laughs> that's quite bad. Ooh, that looks cool though. Looking at the uh, engine effects coming out the back there, the high speed moving. It's a very cool looking craft, I'd say, overall. Those are slightly clipped, but otherwise it does look really cool. Man, I'd forgotten how much these things eat through fuel even when they're burning atmosphere. Hey look, the police are after someone here. I'm watching a helicopter with that spotlight outside just chasing someone down the frickin' road. That's cool. I don't remember what the ratio of liquid fuel to oxidizer is, so we might have already burned more fuel than we should be. I'm not sure.
We're actually slowing down before running out of air. We need to uh, switch modes. There's no notes about how to switch modes. And... It hasn't done it yet. Are these not set to automatic? Oh, what? See, now we're screwed, though. Now we're going to pitch out of control. Oh, come on. Well, that's unfortunate. All right. Let's toggle the mode. Toggle the mode. And toggle the mode. And let's get going up higher, faster, stronger. Oh man, that went badly. Well, let's see how well it does with everything going badly, because if it does well despite everything going badly, that's a good marker of it doing well, right? And we're at Mach 4, which it said it could do Mach 4 plus, so I'd say uh, working as advertised. All right. All right, what are we doing? We're at 37 apopsis. Our uh, surface speed is getting pretty high. I think we're going to make it into orbit, actually, which I'm surprised by because it means this thing has a great margin for error because I'm sure I have not flown this optimally in any way. Yet, it looks like we're going to make it. Oops, that said, we are running out of uh, heat capacity, I guess I could say. We're... Uh, running into issues with heat. All right, let's cut the engines. Cut the, uh, turn on the engines very slightly. Let's kind of stay on our velocity vector there. All right. Let's see, what's our app ups? It's not high enough. So we're going to throttle up a little bit. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot that I can uh, actually look at the Apopsis height on uh, Kerbal Engineer since I have that installed and I have it in the top left. Very convenient. Alright, so our Apopsis is 55 kilometers. I'm going to throttle up just a bit more. Apopsis has reached 70 kilometers. All right, I just kicked it for a split second there to get our apopsis higher. Actually, why not? Why am I manually controlling this when I can just tell it to go prograde? That's that was really dumb of me. I've been following prograde for a while now, and I didn't even think to do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and engage the throttle. And, oh shit, we're almost completely in orbit already. I'm gonna time warp a little bit. Oh, forget that I'm in actual time warp instead of physics time warp. Almost overshoot my goal. Throttle up. I really, I mean, if I wanted to be perfect, I could, you know, sit here and very carefully plan this all out, but uh, I'm just more interested in, oh, did I run out of... No, I didn't. What the hell? And it's... Well, we're in orbit now, so yeah. We're in orbit with some fuel left, and that's with me being a bad pilot, so that's pretty good. Alright, and now I've slowed us back down a bit. Alright, and here we go. Re-entering the atmosphere. All right, getting some re-entry effects. All right, I'm switching to stability assist. So we're going to keep the same angle of attack that we're at right now. So as we go lower or as we go further around the planet, we will start to pitch up more and we'll hopefully produce more drag that way without burning up and also not go too low into the atmosphere because, you know, always got to watch out for that kind of thing, especially because right now we have things that are warning us that they're burning up quite badly here. And I just realized, I just occurred to me, there are air brakes on this thing, and those would help us slow down better, and hopefully not overheat as much. Okay, 
I'm going to lower the angle of attack. Wow, that heat is getting pretty hot. I probably shouldn't have pitched down as much as I did. Alright, turning down the time warp, pitching down a little more. Whoa. Oops, okay, let's pitch up a little bit more. Let's try and hold it about there. And it's not going to hold it at all. That's interesting. Alright. Looks like we're doing well. I'm going to go ahead and disengage the brakes if the game will let me. It's it's not letting me. That's interesting. Have I run out of... <sighs> That's a problem. And it's a problem that I can do nothing about. I didn't even think to consider that. But yeah, there's a fuel cell here I should have activated. Well, I guess we get to watch this thing just drop out of the air, essentially, since it's going to... Well, basically it's going to stall at some point, or, you know, it's going to stall from losing too much airspeed or getting too high of an angle of attack. It looks like it's going to run out of airspeed before it gets too high of an angle of attack because our speed is already 250 meters per second and rapidly dropping due to those air brakes being out. That said, the air brakes being out means that the ground impact will probably be not as severe as it could have been. But still, here she goes. I just wish I could at least put the landing gear down. This is surprisingly stable in this configuration. If this manages to stay this stable, this is going to be a rather tame crash. And since this took a while, I'm uh, I'm going to end it there. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space.